Hey and welcome to the third, no, it's not the third, I said it again. Welcome to the movie about Adobe Camera Raw and Sigma Photo Pro, the big fight! No, just kidding again. People will get angry when I say stuff like that. Alright, so this is about how to develop your skills for the right software, sort of. Uh, I'm a fan of the Sigma Photo Pro, uh, not the actual software, but the output, the image quality. Adobe Camera Raw is a very, very nice software. You have so many features that you really would like to have in the software like Sigma Photo Pro. But so let's uh, let's try to make the best of what we got. So I will now open a, a picture here in Adobe Camera Raw. I will try to make it look like it's taken with Sigma Photo Pro or developed with Sigma Photo Pro. First of all, I see that the white balance is off and it's out of white balance. Yeah. Let's uh, do the dye light here. It's a little bit too blue, I think. Yeah, something like this, I think it's okay. Now the exposure recovery. Yeah, I will bring a little bit of recovery here because of the neck here. Let's zoom in and see. Uh, maybe a little bit more is needed. Uh, let's uh, work a little bit more with the picture before we decide on that. Okay, blacks. I do hold down an Alt key and you see I can see what the black is cut so I will allow it to cut a little bit but not too much maybe four is okay all right brightness is one of those things that makes the picture look Adobe Camera Raw instead of SPP so bring that down helps a lot contrast I like it to go up a little bit contrast is nice clarity some people want me to do a lot of clarity inside the picture in order to make it look SPP, but I don't believe that's true. So I, I skip that part. Vibrance, yes. Sigma Photo Pro has a lot of vibrance in the pictures by default, uh, but in their own way, saturation are being affiliated. Mm? So it looks already much, much better. Now, these tips I got from Robert Tobler at the Deep Review Forum. And um, with his tips, I know that another guy called Alessandro Bernal, he has uh, developed even more from that. Uh, oh yeah, Robert also told me to bring out a little bit of dark here. I think he said minus four in that part and minus eight here. So make a little bit curve touch here. Uh, also, I can say that the picture is too dark now, so I will bring it up. Exposure. Mm. Now the green looks a little bit silly, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't feel really comfortable with this picture anymore. Um, now this looks. It looks okay. It does. It does look okay. All right. Sharpness is another thing that's uh, been bugging me about Sigma Photo Pro uh, Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, radius here is really made for buying cameras. So bring that down. Bring. Uh, to 0.5, I'd like it to be 0.3, and also Bob Van Oink, he told me that uh, he normally brings the picture inside without any sharpening applied, and then he adds sharpening with Nick, for example, Nick Sharpener, or something else, or Smart Sharpen even, inside photo, Photoshop, and I think that's the way to go, that's uh, how you should do it, but for this video, we will now make it... Um, Make it look okay with the sharpening that is uh, that's inside camera roll. All right, so something like this, I think it's okay. We can go closer to some details, and then you see that it looks fairly clean, and there's not a lot of you know ugly, ugly things here. Uh, sharpening art artifacts. Okay, so let's go to the next tab, and here we have something that Alessandro he told me that. Uh, he would like the orange to go down a little bit. I think minus three, then minus seven he had. And yellow, he won't be all down here. Let's see what happens. Uh, with this shot, I don't really agree. I want the green to become more. Okay, so let's see this. And that's how you. Of course, we can move it down. And I also see that the blue color of the, the water and the sky. I think it's, it's more SPP to have it minus here or something. Mm -hmm. You can see here that uh, it looks fairly good. Maybe, maybe, perhaps the brightness is still too high. Yeah, should 
adds even more contrast to this. Something that's uh, a bit special with Sigma Photo Pro is that it gives a very special density to the picture. Something that um, even with all these settings I can't really get with the Adobe Camera Raw. Maybe perhaps if you do a lot of work inside Photoshop you might get that. But I personally think and believe that uh, Sigma Photo Pro gives a little bit better picture. Uh, when it comes to the colors, it has a nicer touch that brings more colors into the picture in a way that Adobe Camera Raw just don't do. The Camera Raw still brings a little bit more finalized picture. Not too much though, I think I, I've started to forgive Camera Raw. Oh, look at here, I had a, a saver already inside the picture, that's bad. Look, so something that's really cool, we take that one away. You see the picture here, the, the sky is a little bit light, so I can press here and then go down like this. I mean, wouldn't that be so nice to have inside Sigma Photo Pro? Today, you know what I do? Yeah, I save as two pictures, one for the foreground and one for the sky or whatever it is, and then I bring it inside Photoshop and then I bring them two together. That's a lot of work. Now you don't really need to do that. So. For some pictures, I really am considering using Adobe Camera Raw to make things just a little bit faster. It's happening, uh, whatever. Oh, there's one thing. The, okay, so this picture is pretty much done now. It looks pretty good. It's not bad. Thank you. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 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 I had one picture here. Yeah, let's take this one. When it comes to black and white, uh, Let's see if this one is fixed already. No, when it comes to black and white, this one is taken into Sigma Photo Pro first. I selected monochrome white balance, and then I bring it inside Camera Raw again in order to get the best monochrome white balance. Because in the Sigma in Adobe Camera Raw, there's no uh, possible way to bring that monochrome white balance. Uh, so if you do like that first, Sigma Photo Pro, and then Adobe Camera Raw, then you can continue in black and white. But there's no way for you to get color again if you don't go back to Sigma Photo Pro and select a normal white balance like daylight or something like that. Then you go back and you have color. Alright, so what you can do here is the sky looks like it's blown out, for example. This is very nice. Just bring this this one down. Alright. Make it really gritty. Even more down like this. Here, yeah, yeah, it's nice. And then let's see if we can break the rest in the contrast. Yeah, and then, um, a little bit of recovery. That's nice also with the Adobe Camera where you have the recovery slider. You have the fill light in Sigma Photo Pro, but it's not like this. This is more cool. Let's see where the black starts. I see some black here. Then. Okay. And we want some sharpness down with that one up here. Yeah, look at that. The gritty drops here. Yeah. He's looking for a ball to catch. You see, now we have a black and white picture that looks a lot better than what we started with. Yeah, so this is it. Uh, so a little uh, applaud for Adobe Camera Raw. And for Sigma Photo Pro's colors. Shishi. <laughs> bye bye for today.